I'm Deandra Fletcher from the ETV Network, and today we're here at Columbia University's 8th Annual African Diplomatic Forum. The theme for this year is Build Africa, the diplomacy of capacity building for our common future. And this topic will be delved into and exposed for African realism. Right now, they're having a lunch break, and in a few minutes, we'll go to the main keynote panel where they'll discuss this theme in more details. Stay tuned. I wanted to introduce real quickly our keynote panel, who's the economic counselor for the, emb the embassy of Rwanda in Washington, D.C. And um, we're glad to have him here today. And I'm, I'm particularly glad because of the story, the success story that Rwanda has been. And I'm confident that he'll add a lot of value to this um, conversation today. Moderating the panel is Professor Agba Norman of Columbia University, who's going to be moderating the panel. And with that, I will let him take over and we can start the panel immediately. Thank you. A lot of focus has often been on kind of, you know, issues of governance and corruption and all of that sort of thing in Africa, and our pessimist uh, kind of uh, um, uh, views. Um, I think Africa has had actually more than its fair share, produced more visionary leaders than almost anywhere else. And among them, uh, of course, uh, the most obvious and well-known example is that of Nelson Mandela. But Nelson Mandela is part of an African tradition, which includes uh, President Nairere, the late president of Tanzania. Uh, although, um, in many ways, uh, the economic successes were actually of the, under that, in that period, in that era, were more limited than, say, in Rwanda, which is the other country under the uh, Kagame's leadership. Uh, Buke has very kindly introduced the two distinguished speakers. I want to go over them again. In order, I would first request the uh, Excellency, the Ambassador from Tanzania, to speak, and then the uh, representative of the government of, of Rwanda to, say, uh, to, to speak. And then we'll open it to discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador. To exchange ideas on how we can make Africa be better known and appreciated. I know if I have to repeat what has been said maybe since the conference started, I'll be repeating what they say and I'll be preaching the choir. But then I thought um, as um, Professor Norman started, there is always um, a good story to tell about Africa. But also, Africa doesn't make good stories here. So this gave me an opportunity to come and uh, share with you some good stories. The rest, you can get it on CNN. <laughs> We're here with the Ambassador of the United Republic of Tanzania, uh, Her Excellency Liberata Mulamula. Uh, she was one of the panelists for the keynote panel discussion, and we're going to ask her a few questions to summarize her presentation here with us today. Uh, welcome. Thank you. So during your speech, you spoke about how Africa is taking the USA by storm. Africa is taking the world by storm, really, and that no one can really tell the story for Africans, but instead we can tell it with Africans. Could you elaborate some more on that point for us? Yes, uh, I emphasize that point because um, Africa has not been making good stories. The news about Africa is always about the misery, the wars. I mean, it's no good news for Africa. But then, when we come to tell it, mm -hmm. then you find most of the American public said, oh, is that, is that Africa we know? Mm -hmm. So we want to change the narrative. 
And this is, um, of course, we cannot say it by ourselves. That's why when we are invited on this occasion, we go for it. Mm -hmm. We say, let's join these institutions. It's Columbia University. Nobody would ignore it. <laughs> Don't listen to it. So that's why, that's why I said we can tell stories with you about Africa. And every given opportunity is to educate the, the American public, but also to seek this partnership. It's very important. We all share the same humanity. As well as saying the common future, we have the common destiny. So we cannot say this are, it's not important for us, it's Africa. This is America, it's not important to us. No, we have to coexist for the sake of humanity. That's so true. And with regards to the actual theme of this forum, you spoke a lot about building capacity, which actually, you know, goes more towards the theme of build Africa, the diplomacy of capacity building uh, and or common future. Uh, in a nutshell, what would be the one takeaway that you would want the audience to get from your overall presentation? Yeah, I just wanted to them to know when we talk of capacity, it's not just overusing the word building capacity. It is real. It is real in the two senses. It's real because here there is a capacity we are seeking. You have the best institutions. You have, uh, we are here, this is one of the top-notch universities. So if we have to be the capacity, this is the place to go. But then in the, in the other sense is why it, uh, Africa is rising. Well, Africa is a new frontier, but then we cannot celebrate and say we can do it on our own. There are still a lot of challenges. Challenges that require skills to be able to absorb and adapt to the new technologies. Capacity that is required in terms of having infrastructure. And you know infrastructure cuts, cuts, cuts across all sectors. We have the capacity to be able to tell our story, this narrative. You can only get it when you have your practice, you will engage with people like you. So my takeaway is from this meeting, I could see that across those who are seated there, that this is the capacity we need <laughs> to be able cross fertilization, of fertilization of ideas, cross fertilization of expertise, but also to get the, the youth. We are investing in the youth as the next generation. How do we invest it without the capacity? So this is my takeaway that uh, being here has helped to be able to tell the story, but also to show that the capacity is real. It is not just being spoken about just for the sake of being rhetoric, but we have to build that capacity to be able to partner with a country or institutions like this. That is so true. We want to thank you for taking the time out to speak with us, and we can only implore you to continue telling that story. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and I would like to invite you also to Washington, D.C. That's where I am based, but more important, come to Tanzania. We will. Country. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. With me, I have Martine Aime, Aime uh, who we're going to ask a question about her thoughts on the forum. So, welcome, Martine. Um, we just wanted to know, did you attend the forum last year? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, and uh, since you, this is your second time around? No, I've attended quite a few when I was a student. Okay, great. What are your thoughts on forums of this nature, and why is it important for you to participate in these types of events? Well, for me, it's always about just... Oh, I'm sorry. For me, it's definitely about um, getting more information, getting more knowledge about, especially the continent, which uh, is uh, very much referenced to as the dark continent. And I was very pleased with Ambassador Mula Mula's uh, opinion on stating that uh, when uh, President Obama brought the African leaders to the uh, to the White House to have a discussion with them, it really brought the dark continent back into the light in some ways, and that. They had an exposure, they had a, a access to the free world and having the seat in the White House and discuss with the president about the issues, a common uh, future and a common destiny that they share. So I really find it very informative to have these uh, forums. I think for the diaspora community as well, it's very good to know what's happening in the continent because a lot of us come here and we kind of stay, we never go back, so we don't really see it. It's good to see people coming from the continent and sharing with us 
what is happening and what we need to do, what changes need to be made, and how we can bring about uh, more infrastructural and transformational change to the continent. Okay, well, thank you so much for your insights, and we hope that we'll see you next year as well. Definitely. I'm here again with one of the members of the audience at the 8th Annual Colombia African Diplomatic Forum. His name is Ebi Watara, and we're going to ask him a question about his thoughts on this forum. Ebi, could you repeat the question that you asked the panelists, and just give us an idea of what their response was, and was it helpful to what you asked? Okay. Um, one of the questions I asked the panelists was trying to figure out, in the past few years, we see that a lot of African countries and governments have focused on FDI attraction, um, trying to make sure that the conditions are right in order for outside investors to come in um, in the country. And one of the major problems that African governments are facing is a huge rise of um, youth unemployment right now because a lot of people are unemployed. And I was wondering how that FDI was going to translate into jobs for people on the ground and what measures and policies they were putting in place um, in order to tackle that. And the, the answer was helpful. Um, the ambassador um, alluded to the fact that a lot of policies such as local content um, policies were put in place in order to make sure that um, governments could reap as much as possible for people. I, however, um, I think there's still a little more you know, to, to grasp from that, I have to say. Um, it will still be important to look at the little factors, you know, of how that translates. Another response I was given was the harmonization of certain sectors in order to facilitate um, business for people on the ground. So I thought it was somewhat helpful. Okay. So here you have it. Uh, we would like to thank Ebi for your input, and we hope to see you next year. So there you have it. We've come to the end of another successful staging of Columbia University's African Diplomatic Forum. The topic was Build Africa, the diplomacy of capacity building and or common future. So we got insights, we got feedback from the audience, they learned something, the panelists did an excellent job, you know, by delving into the topic and focusing on African realism as opposed to African pessimism. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us and we hope that you will stay tuned with ETV Network and also join us again next year and for other initiatives in the African community where we bring home to the diaspora. Thank you.